Hey everyone, this is James here from the Dev Genie Academy and welcome to the Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Engine tutorial and in this video we will be now rendering our rectangle from the last episode and we'll be adding colour so without further ado, let's get on. First you will want to create a shader manager class inside of the core package. We'll also need a private final int of program ID and two further private ints of vertex shader ID and fragment shader ID as well. So in the constructor of the shader manager we need to make sure this throws an exception as well just to make sure. So first we do program ID equals gl20 gl create program. So we can then check to see if program equals zero. If that's the case we can throw a new exception and we can tell the user that we could not create the shader. Next up we want to create the vertex shader which takes in a string for the shader code and again this needs to throw an exception. So the vertex shader ID will be equal to, uh, first we need to create a function for this. So it's a public void create shader and it takes in a string of shader code and also an int of the shader type. And again throws an exception so what we can do is vertex shader ID equals create shader we pass in the shader code and gl20.gl vertex shader. And we can copy this function. Make sure that the create shader function is returning an integer and not void. And we can pass in a fragment shader ID and just change the gl20 to gl fragment shader. And we can then call it create fragment shader. Because all the work will be done in this create shader function we've created. So the shader ID will be gl20 gl create shader. We'll pass in the shader type, and if the shader ID still equals zero, we can throw a new exception of error creating shader. And we can tell the type. We we'll pass that to the user, and we can say shader type. There we go. So if we get past that, we can do a gl20 gl shader source. We pass the ID and the code. So GL20 GL compile shader with the shader ID. And um, then we can see if the GL20 GL shader I with the ID and GL20 compile status, if that equals zero, then we need to throw a new exception. And it's an error compiling shader code, we can tell the type which is shader type, but we can also, most importantly here, we can pass in the actual error that we're going to be pulling through. So if there is any errors in the GLSL shader code, we will get more information from that from here. There we go, so we're going to get what, at least one megabyte, sorry, at most one megabyte worth of data. We then attach the shader with the program ID and the shader ID and then we just return the shader ID itself. So after that we can then create a, another function which is a public void link and again this needs to throw an exception and we can say gl20 gl link program and we do program ID and we can check to see if the program has been linked but we can copy this gl shader i function can change it to gl20 gl get program id. We then pass the program id through and we do the gl link status. There's error linking shader code and we don't need the type in there. And actually we need to change that from compiling because I've spelled that wrong. There we go. So in the info log we can again change this to gl get program info log and just pass that program ID in there. So if there's any errors again we'll be made aware of it. So if the vertex shader doesn't equal zero then we can do gl20 gl detach shader with the program ID and the vertex shader ID and pretty much the same thing for the fragment shader. If that doesn't equal zero we can then gl detach shader with the program ID and the fragment shader ID. 
and then we just need to validate the program with GL20 GL validate program. We can also do another GL program I, program ID and GL20 GL validate status. If that equals zero, then we can throw another exception. Unable to validate shader code. And um, again, we can pass in the GL20 GL get program info log. We pass the program ID and a max length of 1024, so that's one megabyte. So we need to have a bind function. So this is before the shader code has been run. So if we're passing parameters, for example, we use that. And it's just GL use program with a program ID. And unbind, we can then use the same function. But instead of passing the program ID in there, we just pass in a zero. And finally, we do need a clean up function. Um, all we need to do is just call unbind. And if program ID doesn't equal zero, then we can just call GL20 GL delete program with program ID. So in our render manager, we now want to create an instance of that shader. So private shader manager shader. So in the init method, we can do shader equals a new shader manager and shader dot create vertex shader. So now what we need to do is need to be able to get a way of information being read from that shader. So in our utils class, let's create a public static string load resource. We can pass a file name in there, which throws an exception. And string result. And in a try, we can do a input stream of in equals utils.class.get resources stream with the file name. And then we can do a scanner, which then equals to a new scanner. And we pass in that variable. We also need to have a utf8 char set dot name. And then the result basically just equals scanner dot use delimiter, which is a double backslash with a letter A uppercase dot next. And then we just return that result. And we need another function in here, which instead of a float buffer, we need a int buffer. So we can just copy that function through, change the float buffer to int buffer, and change this from a store data in float buffer to store data in int buffer change the float array to an int array and again change that to an int buffer there. Um, mem alloc float needs to be called and everything else is all good. So we can close that utils class down because we don't need it anymore. So in the render manager again we can then do utils.load resource and we pass in forward slash shaders forward slash vertex.vs and we can then do a create fragment shader as well with utils.load resource of forward slash shaders forward slash fragment dot fs and then we just do shader dot link and in the render method after we do the clear we can then do shader dot bind and after we've unbound the vertex array we can do shader dot unbind so all the code gets executed after the shader code has been bound and then we unbind it because we finished in the cleanup method we need to make sure we're calling shader.cleanup. So we need to also now create these two vertex and fragment files. Uh, but first in the object loader, we need to be able to pass in a int array. So add that int array as a parameter. And we also need another function in here, which is a private void store indices buffer. And we pass in the int array of indices there we go. So it's very similar to our store data and attribute list, but in this case we're going to be creating a VBO again. Add that to the VBO list. And we then call GL15 GL bind buffer. But this time we call GL15 GL element array buffer with the VBO as a parameter. And then we can create that in buffer by calling utils.store data in int buffer and pass the indices through as a parameter. GL15, GL buffer data. We again, we need that GL element array buffer with the buffer and the static draw. And now in our load model, 
After we've got the create VAO, we can then call store indices buffer, and we just pass the indices into it as a parameter. So in our test game now, if we scroll down to our init method, this vertices is OK, but what we need to do is add indices there now. Indices array is 0, 1, 3, and 3, 1, 2. And all we need to do now is pass that indices array into our loader.load model. So now if we close that down and in our resources package, let's create a new directory called shader. And in the shader, we need to create our two vertex and fragment shaders. So vertex.vs and fragment.fs. So first of all, in the vertex, make sure you have the version number at the top. That's pound version 400 core. And we take an input of the vector 3 of the position, the pixel position of the part of the screen we're rendering. We pass out a vector 3 of colour. And that, passing that out will then take it it's in to the fragment shader. So all we need to do now is do a void main. And in there we just do gl underscore position, make sure p is uppercase, uh, equals a vector 4. So it's position comma 1.0. And then all we do is pass colour to be a vector 3 of position dot x. We'll make that plus 0 0.25, um, 0 0.17, position dot y, plus 0 0.25 as well. So these values, all it's going to do is pass a, a value as a colour into the rectangle we're rendering. So don't worry too much about those colours. So in our fragment shader again, version 400 core, we take in a vector 3 of the colour and we pass out a vector 4 of the fragment colour. So it's very straightforward in the main class here. All we do is do fragment colour equals a vector 4 because we need to convert colour to a vector 4 and we just pass colour and 1 as parameters. So in our test game now we can go ahead and run this. And as you can see now, our rectangle has now been rendered with colours on the grid position. So going back to those values that I put in the vertex array, if we change these from 0 0.25 to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 and 0 0.8, what you'll find is the colours have slightly changed. It's very light now. But that's all that those values were. It was just a colour value based upon the pixel coordinate of the screen. So that's everything for this week. Next week, what we'll be looking at is adding a texture to the rectangle we've got rendered to the screen. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below.